Hey everybody, it's Premier Gal here and I'm here with Chris, co-founder of Metal. Chris, thanks for coming. Thank you. So I want to let you guys know that actually Meadow was very generous and donated uh, Metal Skybox 360 VR tools for Premiere Pro, a plugin that you can use. It's awesome. I actually have a tutorial on it on my channel that you can watch. So definitely ask questions and you could get entered into the lottery to win it among other prizes as well. So I'm just going to kick it off here and ask Chris, you know, what are some of the latest products here um, for Metal? Sure. So um, we were fortunate enough uh, to be chosen by Facebook recently uh, to collaborate on products to bring depth into 360. So what that means uh, for people involved in VFX and editing already, uh, depth of field, depth-based masking, some, a couple of things that we take for granted in flat cinema production are very difficult to do in 360. These tools will help bring that to 360 amongst other things, like six degrees of freedom, so it'll actually make the whole viewing experience in HMD much more pleasant, much more realistic. Uh, depth of field is a very, very powerful tool for storytellers. I mean, focus on you, focus on me. It's a, it's a storytelling device, right? So I think that's huge. Anything that helps you tell the story better in 360, I'm in. So is the depth of field its own like unit to buy? Yeah, I, well, we actually we haven't really decided that yet. It's too early on to think about marketing. What we'd like to focus much more on is creating a really, really rich offering. And I have to say, even if in its infancy, the depth of field is actually very organic looking. It's not synthetic. I think it's going to get better and better as we move along in the beta. And it's actually pretty fast as it is. So if you've done any kind of depth of field effects, you know it's a bit of a render hog. We've already got it working way faster than anything you've seen. By the time we're done, it'll be just incredibly good. Yeah. Like, well, I hope that it's in Premiere Pro and After Effects yeah, to have both of that. Yeah. So do you want to tell a little bit about sort of what products or what final products that people have created with Metal that you've really enjoyed watching? Oh, wow. Wow. That, that, that is so quite a bit, but some of the pieces that have I, say, I, I can say touched me have been some pieces that have actually made a social impact that is a measurable social impact, which is incredible. So I, I always cite one which stands out to me, which is uh, by a, a customer called Fugitives TV. So they're, and one of the reasons I do that is because they have used the medium so effectively. And in, and in effect, it actually caused that social change that I'm talking about. So it's Fugitives TV. They did a piece called Francis that was shown at Sundance. And the whole idea was it's mental health issues, especially in third world countries where they don't have the means to deal with this. And basically people that, for, you know, whether it's physical or environmental, um, mental health issues come a person's way and they don't really know how to deal with it, nor do they have the infrastructure to deal with it. So the whole notion was is that Fugitives TV had the opportunity to choose any medium they wanted to tell the story because it was for a very select group. It was delegates that controlled money and decided where money was going. They chose 360, they put together the production, everybody walked away with the right action items and, move, and they actually moved money the right way to help. In the cost. So that touched me. That was unbelievable. Yeah. So did they did they use a lot of the transitions and like the titles to sort of no? Uh, no? Not so much the transitions. They were using very basic tools. They did a lot of and after effects because some of it is sort of like uh, happens in the um, in the uh, Francis, who's the protagonist, if you will, in his mind. A lot of it happens. So imagine using After Effects the way we always do in film and cinema, but in 360. So it wasn't so much a transition thing as mo as an effects and storytelling thing. Yeah, yeah. And Andrea just asked. Uh, oh, we just answered their question. She was watching again. It was about if uh, the plugin can be used in Premiere Pro. But yes, there's a separate plugin for Premiere Pro. So fantastic. And where do you see, I mean, there's been a lot of innovations in VR and 360 video. And I was just talking with a colleague of yours and how stitching may actually go away very soon. Yes. Oh, yes. It's actually gone quite away. <laughs> Which I'm happy about. <laughs> I think you and everybody else, right? So we've seen some technology... Uh, we, we actually support some efforts because we like where they're going, not only from 
a camera standpoint, but also from a monetization and a plan platform standpoint. But if we talk pure hardware and tech and stitching, you'll actually, if you walk the floor here, you'll see um, live stitch solutions that are pretty damn good. I mean, damn, damn good, right? So AMD launched an initiative with open source software for stitching. NVIDIA did the same thing. A lot of that has already made it its way into the camera. So it's either cloud or even resolved in camera. So I, we think it's going to go away. There'll still be cleanup, which is, I mean, you have cleanup in anything to do, right? But yeah, we think it's just going to completely go away. So if anybody is out there just starting out in VR 360 video, like where do you recommend people begin? Uh, buy the cheapest camera you can. Uh, you don't even need to buy our products. You can actually do quite a bit in Premiere Pro uh, without our products. Uh, just start editing, cutting, making mistakes, throwing that, learning, moving on to the next thing. Get to the point where you've got yourself a nice um, presentation piece. Get some business. Let them let the business pay for the expensive cameras. Let them pay for our software and other software out there that'll help you do your job. Learn. Have fun. It's a great medium. Um, fail. Fail big. You'll you'll be you'll. I think I think it's invigorating. I really like the medium a lot. When we were first presented way back when with the 360 project, that's how it all started. By the way. We were, we were production, we're content creators. We're, we weren't really plug-in developers or product developers. So one of our customers came to us and said, would you help us with 360? I put together a process to deliver a project, never ever thinking it was gonna become a product. But what the, back to what I was saying about, the interesting thing about that was, I quickly realized that I knew nothing when it came to 360. And some people see that as daunting. I think you need to look at it as challenging and a great opportunity to help shape this vocabulary in, in a very, very young and fresh new medium. Yep. Absolutely. So I have a tutorial online actually on the 360 VR tools. It's the Skybox, where I show you how to actually insert titles to help guide the viewer to make it an interactive experience. So. It's still the same old storytelling, you know what I mean? But because 360 Space and Premiere Pro behaves differently, you need some plugins to help guide the experience. And I think that's what Chris and Nancy here, they were experimenting with, like how do we deal with this medium but still tell a story effectively? No doubt. So, I mean, when you're, when you're ready, you can get to our tool set and we'll be happy, of course, to, to greet you into the family. Start with Premiere Pro, start cutting your pieces, start working with some of the transitions. At one point, there will be a compelling reason for you to start visiting After Effects. And you'll visit it, I guess, with an open mind and with, with a good reason to be able to go through the learning curve that you have to go through with After Effects. Because what comes out of it is phenomenal, right? Once you make that initial investment and get over that initial learning curve, I mean, a whole new world opens up for you. It's incredible. Yeah. Someone from New Zealand is asking, um, they're a beginner, uh, what product of metal shall I start with? Definitely start, if you're very new to it, start with the Premier Pro products. We have one called 360 VR Tools. By the way, I'll be in New Zealand in, uh, I think, the first week of May. End of first week of May, yeah. Great things about New Zealand. I really want to go. I've not been, so I'm stoked. Are you going to Wellington, Auckland? Auckland, and then we're making our way to Australia, Singapore, and it's on and on. Are you shooting 360 there? I, I don't have time. I, I spend my time with I try to spend my time with um, small shops, big shops. I definitely try to see schools. Yeah. I, I always try to see schools. Uh, so I really don't have time to shoot. I wish, I wish I could shoot, especially in New Zealand, and Australia, but it, my schedule won't allow it. Yeah. I, I completely understand that. Um, somebody from VR just asked, what do you think of text in 360 videos? Isn't VR goggle consumption? I'm guessing the, the, the headsets of 360 videos more about watching and experiencing instead of reading? Um, so that's experiential versus narrative. I'm on the narrative side, sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I have way too much cinema in me and I think a lot of us do it. We love a story and it's not just cinema. We just uh, go back to campfire days, right? To, to, 
a Neolithic days, if you will. We love to tell the story. I'm, I'm more on the story side than the experiential side. I think eventually what's going to happen is that we're going to start merging very passive cinematic experience with a highly interactive runtime or gaming experience. And that's going to be interesting because it's going to lead to non-linear storytelling, right? So, I, I don't know, I, I'm not that much of a purist, quite frankly. I'd rather the experience be rich. If, if it needs text, I'm good with that. If it needs a dog, I'm good with that. If it needs, I don't know, whatever it needs, I'm good with that, if it helps tell the story. Have you heard of Hotspot before? It's not wireless hotspots, but hotspots in interactive storytelling. I think there's a company called, I think it's Verse, where you can actually, it's like choose your own adventure, yeah, so but in video. That, that's branch narrative. Hotspots is exactly it. Hit testing, some people call it hit testing. That's something that happens has to happen in player, right? So we don't really help with that right now. We could actually build that, but the fundamental problem is, is you would be able to run it on a very small website or in a very proprietary player, but how do you get that to run in YouTube? How do you get it to run in Facebook? They need to support that technology before it really flies. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much, guys, for all of your questions. Uh, Chris, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, um, if, if you're gonna visit any area of the blog, or sorry, of our website, definitely just go to the blog. You're, it's, it's so rich, we don't try to sell you anything. It's really, what we try to do is curate, it's actually Nancy that's doing all, most of this work. So Nancy curates incredible experiences and incredible stories that'll just help make your stories way better. It's not about our products, really it isn't. Uh, I wish I could delete everything that says metal, 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 and just, it's, it's become a bit of a mecca. We get incredible amounts of traffic because we're, we're, we're really more concerned about better and better experiences than selling a product. I think eventually you do make, sorry, it, it, it does make it, it that, that sort of comes back to us, right? What, the more we put out there, the more goodwill, the more we teach people, eventually it does come back our way. Yeah. Well, that's the best way to approach it because honestly, we're all storytellers and we're lucky enough to have metal as being one of you know the most, I think, affordable on the market, which is why I think it's gotten a lot of traction as well. So, oh, for sure. we, yeah. We decided to democratize early on, and we're going to try to keep things that way as best as possible. Like the uh, the, the suite that we're selling, we, we've amalgamated everything into a suite, what we're calling a Skybox suite. That's seven products at 499 bucks. Uh, what we've actually done is we've kept padding it and padding it, and we continue. We plan to continue to pad it until we can't anymore. Right, the cost is too prohibitive on our side. So we're being as supportive as we possibly can. We're showing our commitment. Well, thanks so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. You. And you guys, be sure to you have until 5 p.m. today to sign up for my lottery to win. And this was the last series of my live streams at NAB. So thank you guys so much. And I will see you um, soon on the YouTube. You. <laughs> Bye.